Welcome to the Grundfos Subfactory Service Program. During this program, we're going to be discussing the different features of the Subfactory Program, where you actually receive different components from the factory in packaged assemblies. For the 85S, for example, you would get a variable component package that will be packaged in a box. Inside the box, you have four straps, your shaft, along with your name tag. Then there is the standard package assembly, which consists of your four inch inlet, in this case, a chamber, and the discharge piece. And so in some instances, you'll actually be building color pumps, in which case you would get uh, first stage or single stage packages packaged as an individual item. These will consist of a chamber, a split cone, split cone nut, and an impeller, along with the seal rings and the bearings that are packaged inside the units. And again, after you've opened up the package, you'll find your shaft, your straps, your cable guard, priming inducer, priming inducing spacer, along with the name tag. And to double check that everything is there, we have a bill of materials that is also included inside the variable component package. So taking these assemblies, along with the instructions that you find in your subfactory groundwater manual, you'll be able to put the pump together effectively using the proper tools and following the step-by-step -step instructions. Your standard package, which either comes in 4-inch or 6-inch and even an 8-inch model, will have your discharge piece, a standard chamber, and the inlet of the varying sizes, along with a bolt package to attach the pump to the motor. Along with this assembly, there is, in the check upper discharge piece, there will be your check valve, your check valve, your upper chamber, with the check valve seat upper bearing, and that rides and has a up thrust washer assembly also included in this, where the washer is directly inside the split cone nut. The standard uh, or the per stage packages or single stage packages again consist of a chamber, seal ring, bearing, impeller, split cone, and split cone nut. We'll take these components using the proper spacer, spacer bolt, and build plate in order to assemble this pump. The build plate comes either with a 6 inch side which has the smaller surface or the 4 inch side with the larger surface area and it's important to make sure that you are using the right side of the plate along with your spacer and build bolt in order to have the right in play or travel that's inside the pump. So assemble these now. When positioning the build plate, it's important that you have a little area of the plate actually above the surface of the vise edge so that it does not affect the in play or the seating of the inlet on the surface. This is particularly important when you're building a 6 inch or 8 inch product because if it is lower than that, than the surface, it will actually affect the in play area. Using the proper spacer and the proper bill bolt, put that through the plate, take the shaft, and screw the shaft onto the spacer. And you have to tighten it with an Allen wrench. On the SP17, or the 85S only, you will need to use a spacer and a priming inducer on the low head pumps to ensure that there is proper lift provided to the pump. So this has to slide on first, goes all the way down, and then you put your priming inducer on. And that must be tapped in place. And then you use your specialty tool to drive it the rest of the way home. firmly seated. Then you have to loosen the shaft from the holder. Leave the spacer in place. Take your inlet. Put down. Then put your shaft down over the top. Put your bolt back in place. Tight, make sure you tighten your shaft back up. Take the impeller. 
remove the up thrust washer so as not to damage it when you put it down. Slide the impeller down. And just before seating the impeller, nice squirt of wa uh, soapy water. Screwdrivers underneath to pull that up. Firmly seating it in place. The inlet shouldn't lift at this point. Take the specialty wrench that goes over the shaft, tighten down the split comb nut, get it ready for the, the proper torque. Then you take the upthrust washer, take the taper and fit down inside the split cone nut. Up inside on the smooth surface of the chamber. Make sure that the edges of the chamber are clean, that there is no debris on the edges, and then fit the chamber over the shaft. Fit your inlet. Remove the net thrust washer from the assembly. Take the impeller. Bring it down. Before you seat it, a nice squirt of soap. Force this all the way down. Take your screwdrivers in underneath the split comb nut. Pull it up. Tighten down the threads, pull it up again, make sure it's seated, you'll notice it's loose. When properly seated, then you can tighten it down with the proper wrench. And then you put a torque wrench in, and to make sure that the impeller doesn't spin, there's a specialty tool that you can put in place. And at that point, please make sure that the impeller doesn't spin after the tool has been removed. At this point, you can take the bottom thrust washer, make sure that you're using the taper and that it's facing downward into the split cone nut. Then you can fit the next chamber, which has the smooth surface on the interior surface. Just slide down over the top. Pushing down on the split cone nut and lifting up on the impeller edges. And just before we seat it, we spray soapy water. Then you go ahead and tighten up the split cone nut. Then you repeat the process, and then you fit the upper chamber. Check valve. On the discharge piece, you want to take these right here, and line those up with the bottom piece down there where the holes are for the straps. And then we have a, a tapered area on our 17 millimeter wrench. And then tighten. Make sure that you tighten from side to side, just like you would on a tire. Put it on your tire on the car. And it's important that this is done in three steps to make even tightening of the straps so that you don't get your pump bent at an angle. Then you take a torque wrench to do the first step in tightening. Again, make sure that you're doing it evenly to both sides.
pump is completely built and we can take it loose. At this point we're going to want to check our in play which is the travel in and out of the coupling and to do this you need to have a depth veneer. When you're checking this measurement you want to make sure that the shaft is all the way down so reach in, firmly grasp the shaft and then put your tool in make sure that it doesn't rock and then go into the coupling hole all the way in to the bottom of the shaft and then check your measurement. In this case this one is 36.6 .6, which is good. Then push the shaft all the way up and then take the measurement again for the up measurement. Again make sure you're in the hole of the coupling. Make sure you're tool it's flat and then push it all the way in and this has to be above 39 and here we are 39.3 so that's good and then you'll want to mount the pump to your motor make sure that the spline is turned so that everything engages properly and make sure that you don't damage the leads while you're putting the pump over the top and onto the motor then you'll attach your four screws or four nuts. And just like before, it's important that you tighten these down diagonally, just like you would again if you were putting on or changing your tire on your car. And they have to be tightened to the correct torque as well. Then you want to lay the pump down, stretch your leads out, lock this in place, and then make sure that when you're putting your cable guard in place that you don't cut your leads. This may require pinching your tabs. Sometimes you'll have to use a screwdriver under the strap to give enough space for the tab to slide under. Take your boot, place it over the cable. Well, this goes better the first time. You stretch out the cable, make sure it's not pinched. screwdriver in underneath the other strap. Again, you want to make sure that you've got the cable pulled firmly so that you don't cut the lead. And we want to make sure that the cable guard goes underneath this area here. And to do that, make sure again that the cable is underneath the cable guard you may have to hit on this just to give it enough of a bend so that this will go under smoothly and tap it in place. If this is damaged uh, when you get it or if you have it damaged and have to repair, then it's simple to remove the seal ring and the bearing. The bearing simply you pull back and pull up to remove the bearing and to remove the seal ring you push it in in and underneath and then pry it up. To reinstall you'd always get a brand new bearing and a brand new seal ring. Make sure that the groove on the 85S that the longer portion is facing downward into the chamber and you simply bend the bearing in place and then release. Make sure that it's properly seated in place and then you can install the new seal ring 
and it says this side up so that area is facing upward on the new seal ring you put this in place and then you can gently tap it into the chamber.